Hey, what's up? It's me, your girl Nia. I am coming to you from Black Exploration with Nia. <laughs> Drinking your water and minding your business is the best when you literally have a chemical imbalance that is causing the personality defect of narcissism. I only want to talk about this because I have supported men through this. And I know that when men are in dark times, they drink alcohol or they have lots of sex. What value can you bring can you bring to this person and see in them? So how much did you have to fix your relationship with yourself first in order to have a successful relationship with someone else? Even in the realm of dating. When it comes down to it, people's opinions are not facts, it's just their opinions. Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Nia, with Black Exploration. So today we are going to explore childhood trauma. Um, so, you know, on this podcast, I like to be very authentic, very um, open, share my experiences. Now, I know that I am a licensed clinical professional, but also outside of that, I'm a person, I'm a woman. And so... This is not Nia Rigio. So Nia Rigio is like the professional, the woman who is all those things business. And then there's me, like Nia, hi. <laughs> the person behind that person, right? So with this podcast, we are going to be exploring authenticity and just openness and trust. And just explain what that means for us, even though we have this other alter ego out there doing all these amazing things. Like there's a person behind that person, right? So we're just going to make space for that person, hey, because we often ignore that person. And we're just going to spend some time with it. So we're going to explain all those things. So today we're going to be exploring childhood trauma. So childhood trauma is something that I think that we all have got to like admit we have had some of it. And I think that when we don't, we really don't, really don't do ourselves a, serve, a good service to do that because everybody wants to show up like super, super healthy, but like they have baggage. So I want to take time out to like explore why do we hide the fact that we've experienced some form of childhood trauma like what's what's the behind the scenes of that and so um the only way that i can really explore that with you guys is by sharing my story and then you guys sharing your stories and then you bringing in questions because this is going to be a really interactive podcast and i really want everybody to participate because this is exploration of authenticity and i'm not trying to be the only authentic one in the room <laughs> Oh, we are going to have a whole party of authenticity go up, going up in here, and I want you guys to participate in it, okay? So what made me get into uh, childhood, exploring childhood trauma? Okay, so I was in on my healing journey, and I kept getting, like, um like visions of me as a child and I'm like why do I keep getting his signs like what the heck is going on here and so um I'm a, a really meditative person so I have only meditate I have only pray and I kept getting like like flashes of me as a little girl sitting on this lawn just crying and so I was like, okay, what is this about? And I, I remember, I literally remember the day that I, I chose to um, disassociate from my from my body, like just like I, I think I talked about this. I talk about this with my queens in our group, um, uh, disassociation, and how many of us have disassociated from ourselves and our bodies a long time ago. And some of us are still disassociated from that experience because we haven't really healed from that. So, um, yeah, I, I I literally was like, all right, so I'm going to check out. <laughs> because I grew up in a household that, I mean, in an environment I was extremely, uh, what, I, what I would 
for me, for I'm very I'm in, very empathic, and so I'm highly t- intuitive and sensitive. So for me, in my level of intuitiveness, it was very um, traumatizing. So um, I spent most of my time disassociated from my body. So what does disassociation look like? Okay, when you're present, but you're gone. <laughs> like somebody could just be like. But you're functioning. That's the thing. It's not, it's not like you're. Um, it's not like you're just like blank stare. Like you. Like sometimes when you eat edibles and like you're just stuck. It's not like that. No. It's literally like your body in motion and your ability to function is there. But your your rea- you as the spirit as a person you're gone. Like you're not there at all. And many of us are still in our hypnotic state from trauma, from childhood trauma. And so I was like that for many, many years. And when I woke up from this, like, space, I was like, wait, like, I hate my life. (laughs) What the heck did I create here? Like, what the heck? And... Then I started to realize, like, I I was repeating so many cycles and so blinded by so many cycles I was repeating. Like, I wasn't even present for my own life. Like, I wasn't even making it. It was already made up. And so since that awakening, I've been, like, dismantling a lot of things. And it comes, a lot of that conditioning came back from childhood. So my disassociative behavior started at seven. So that's where my healing starts. So I have to, I've had to go back and love on a seven year old and hug her and affirm her and give her all those things that she needs. And it's been messy. Cause she likes to like be a princess and like get her way and do all these things. She's really expensive. So I just think that, Part of getting to know yourself uh, from that from those these different states, I feel like I've always been a person who's been who's liked uh, to be taken care of and to be affirmed and to have a really beautiful life. But because of trauma, that way of being for me got stunted, and I disassociated from the reality of like not being able to experience that. So going back and doing childhood work helped me understand that so I can have a better understanding of like my children and like uh, myself and see myself and my mother and like just do all those different things and then break that cycle. So it's really important that we um, heal our childhood trauma because you wanna just have a very profound relationship with yourself and with your children, right? They have to be worth it for you. So those are just some of the things that I feel are like really important for if you're really wanting to be on your healing path, childhood trauma is really relevant, especially if there's some type of um, emotional neglect is a huge one. So if you feel oftentimes that you're having to earn people's approval and you people please a lot and you feel like you have to be exceptional just to be accepted you know those are signs of emotional neglect um overexertion is too because you you when you're lacking in an emotional area area and that's from childhood that void that void stays there and you may cope with it as a child, you know, just to get through it. But when you start dating, you know, your dating life's probably going to be wrapped around in that uh, mindset, too, and how you just live your life. And so after a while, it's going to catch up to you. So we have to also go back and, you know, support our childhood trauma because it's really important that we... Um, really emphasize having that childhood connection to us hey guys so we are back with black exploration with nia today we're going to be talking about necessary 
pain okay so remember on this channel we are all authentic we are all sharing our experiences this is 100 percent interactive so send your questions also please comment below share your experience with everybody we're going in authentic connected community and so we're going to talk about today in that same spirit of authenticity necessary pain and why sometimes we don't like feeling our pain so we avoid it right but sometimes pain is necessary for that extra layer of growth so today we're going to be talking about why is that necessary um ways that you can support yourself to build the courage to be in that mindset and also um you know ways that you can really un support yourself why when you're going through painful experiences okay so um some takeaways i want you guys to just think about when we're exploring necessary pain is what do you need when you are dealing with pain that you are avoiding right like what are some of the things do you need to be seen heard valued do you need space do you need time to think um, do you need to go on a walk? Like what, think about the things you need when you're dealing with painful experiences because some of those experiences are necessary. So we can't avoid them. We have to just support ourselves through it. So really recognizing that there's never going to be a time to be ready to experience pain, Right. Pain doesn't come up when it's sufficient for you. It doesn't come up when it fits your schedule. It doesn't come up when things are going great. It comes up when you're already like low energy. Like it doesn't pick a specific time to show up. So in that reality, the real question like I asked before is what are some of the things that you need when you are experiencing pain so it doesn't feel as detrimental um, because we know with growth, things are going to be painful sometimes. So specifically with the black community, um, we're really good at dealing with the same pain over and over because we're in fear of the new pain that we could be experiencing. But even with the pain that you're feeling, for me, the I'd rather take a chance and feel more pain than stay in the pain that I was in, right? And so it's really just a logical thought process, right? Like if you're already in pain, if maybe if you experience some new ones, some new pain, would it be that bad? Maybe what well, you, you would never know, right? But we like to stay in the same pain over and over and over again because of the initial shock of um, our experiences. And so um, it's never gonna be a necessary time like to um, be ready for pain, right? Being a pessimistic, being skeptic, being a skeptic doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't add value to your life. It just makes you sit in your in your in your lack of being ready. Yes. So what will help you with fighting that urge to continue to want to feel the same pain over and over and over is to have some level of commitment to yourself. To know that you can get yourself out of whatever situation that you're in. And if you can't, then that's where you need to start your healing process because why don't you feel that you can support yourself? Where did that come from? And developmentally, if we're going back to previous episodes, we talked about, um, you know, the importance of the inner child, right? Was that from childhood? Did you get that narrative from childhood and going back and visiting that is important. So if you're committed to going through that journey, then that's where you'll find growth and that's where you'll start to really evolve. But sometimes it's painful, right? But the reward far, far, far out vast the, the pain because you're already in pain anyway doesn't matter <laughs> pain is pain if you feel the inch more like i mean i think that would make you a black person or african i don't think that it would be 
<laughs> we deal with pain all the time, guys. Like it's pretty, we're pretty good at it. So, um, after you've like made that commitment, stay grounded in that because this a lot of us we make commitments and we don't stay grounded in our commitments, and we expect these surmountful things to happen for us, but we're not ready to receive it because we really haven't had the groundedness um, to keep us committed to, you know, our virtues and our values and what we we stand for outside of obligation roles and semantic politics. You know, this is, uh, staying grounded is, is necessary for not just... Um, us as a people, revolutionary, but economically, it just makes sense too, right? To stay grounded. I feel like if economically, if you have grounded people, um, then when things are not, um, you know, copacetic or just, you know, not in chaos, I would just logically think that the ground being a grounded person would um, economically just make sense to people. Um, so yeah, I really, I'm interested in, for the viewers that are, if you're listening to this and you're feeling, um, inspired to share, um, I want you guys to share your experiences with me, uh, because what's really, what we're talking about is recognizing pain. And some of you are in that pain right now and you're recognizing that we're talking about it here. And so, how do you deal with that and where do you go to get that support from so if this is speaking to you then you should really reach out to me and my team and we should all come together and see how we can support you because this message um is definitely a necessary one and it builds the necessary courage right that you need and i think that black people we we, we want to have it like all figured out and have it together, right? But we're missing so much of that information. <laughs> Intentionally, we're missing all this information. And so, um, I, and I'm speaking, you know, in reference to what I used to do. I used to self-sabotage because I, I, I wouldn't ask for help. You know, I wouldn't receive the necessary support. But when I started my healing journey, I started understanding these different layers of why it was important for me to have courage, for me to embrace myself, for me to have these experiences because I was having them anyway. So it's just necessary for you to stay grounded in who you are, for you to stay committed, um, and to have some readiness, right, when embracing necessary pain because we're all going to be in it at some point. So that is my, um, my talk about necessary pain. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait personally to read the comments about it. I'm interested in your journey. Um, I'm also looking to have guests on here. So if this is a topic you want to take, um, off my lap and you explore it here on my podcast, I would love for you to reach out to me. You can reach out to me at team at originalconsulting.com. It's going to be in the comments below because I want to get you here and let's talk about it. Let's explore it together. So peace out and thanks for watching my channel and listening to my podcast. Today, did I kick that? You're good. Oh, okay. Okay. So hey welcome back guys thanks for um listening in i'm excited to bring another topic um of discussion and again this is black exploration with nia and i am excited to interact with all of you on this platform i'm excited to get to know all of you i'm excited to share our authentic experiences because we already agreed that this is a platform for authenticity and we're going to just share in our experiences together and we're going to explore our evolution as humans here and as i stated before i am just nia the person right not nia the the therapist the you know whatever successful person 
I created myself to be. I'm just here with you as a a woman, a black woman, a woman um, who is a mother. I guess I would be a baby mama. <laughs> um, I guess I, you know, um, what else could I say? I'm educated. I'm black. I'm proud. Um. I'm a very loving, passionate person. I'm super fierce. Like I can buy you flowers and then take them with, and cut them with a machete <laughs> at the same time and run you over with my car. But, you know, polarity, right? Law of polarity. Yin, right? Yank. So... Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, just body flow. So we talked about in previous episodes about, you know, really getting to know yourself, dealing with childhood trauma. We talked about different things that um, are imperative for just understanding and getting your, to know yourself on a really intrinsic, authentic level. And it's really important for us to get to know ourselves so we can get in some type of flow state, right? So everyone wants to know, like, how do you be your highest self? How do you maximize your full potential? How do you be, you know, your truest highest self? And it's really just getting into a flow state. But like we talked about on the last episode around epigenetics, right? So we know that we have different characteristic traits in our DNA that go off in survival mode, right? So if we're not conscious of what DNA we're triggering, then we're going to be in that mindset, right? So it's important, again, to heal that childhood trauma. It's important for you to really understand your genetics. And and it doesn't have to mean like going and get tests ran or anything like that. It's really just getting to know your body and getting to your body so you can get that flow state, so you can be at your highest self. So that's why that's important. And why I wanted to bring this topic up now, because we as black people, we have a hard time getting in the flow state um, because we're so far removed to just like nature and um, silence and just, you know, our natural um, habitat. So some characteristic traits of how you can get your body into a flow state is letting a lot of things go, right? We have such a hard time letting things go And it's not the idea of what we're losing, but it's the emotions behind the act of actually doing it. And I think we always want to, we always tend to pay attention to the uh, act of actually having to let things go rather than the emotions behind the actual act, right? Because we try to avoid our emotions. So some of the emotions that you may be feeling could be associated with just maybe abandonment issues in your childhood or maybe you feel like you want to rewrite your parents' love story or lack thereof or maybe, you know, you may have some father-mother difficulties, you know, not having them present. There can be, like, a lot of different things behind that and that can be blocking your flow state. So it's important, like, to really let things go because... If you don't, then you're going to be at like a really high, elevated, frustrated level of your life. And it's just not going to be something that is supportive of you. And so letting things go is going to really help you get into that flow state. And it's going to help you align with your chakras, with your purpose more, with your productivity is really going to help you with that side of it um another way to get into a natural flow state is to be fully expressed so a lot of us we we stunt our expression because we were like in fear of like the reaction and um i feel like black men do this a lot i feel like black men and women do this a lot like i feel like Black men and women, like, we just really suppress a lot of our emotions. And it's actually to the point where our face, our, our faces are stoic in their approach. Like, 
I know for me, part of my um, healing journey was I had to do um, facial massages because I had mastered like being stoic. And so when I started to try to date healthy, <laughs> I had no expression. They would be like, oh, do you like me? I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be like, yeah, I really like you. It would be like, yeah. Because I was just trained not to, as a child, have emotions to well, to display them. So that really helps with a flow state, just really making sure that you're in full expression. It adds to creativity, intimacy, um, connection, longer-term relationships, um, standards, boundaries. It leads to so much by just being a fully expressed person. You really knock out a lot of those blocks that are there when you're not. Um, and... The next one is being honest. Um, a lot of people are not honest. <laughs> and it could be on purpose or not on purpose. You know, you just never know. However, if you're intentionally not being honest um, or even open to honesty, then that can also be blocking your energetic flow state. So another uh, supportive uh, measure when um, trying to align and get into a flow state is being sensual, like, and being free in that. Um, I think this is, like, a lot for men, like, especially black men. Black men are not really sensual like that. And then, like, if you guys are, then people think that you're same sex or something or gay or something. It's, like, really, um, it's very interesting to even think about. So, that's also something I want us to talk about more. So if you guys have a comment or a thought about that, could you put that in there right now? Because I really want to know, like, how does it feel for a black man to be sensual? <laughs> like, even the word, those two words together, like, what do you picture, like, as that? And if you are a black man who's sensual, like, what does that mean? Like, how does that look? And how do you exude that? I'm interested in both ends. So if you're a guy who doesn't, and that makes you feel away, whatever, comment. If you guys, if you guy who is, comment. I want to know, like, different things. And if you are my queens, if you are out there, what's up with that? Like, sensual guys. Like, how does that look? Do you like it? Um, is it your type? Is it, do you prefer it? If you've dated somebody, like, put it in the comments below. I'm interested. Um, so the next thing that can get you into an energetic flow state is not being worried about connecting to people because many of us have a hard time being alone. And when we get into situations where we could possibly be alone, um, we, um, start to chase people. And so, um, that can be that can get in the way of your alignment because you could be needing some alone time and some time to get your thoughts together and get your align own alignment together before you try to align with somebody else. But because you're not utilizing that as a resource, um, it's just not, you know, helping with your alignment. So let's do a recap. How to get your body in a flow state. First one, let it go. Okay. Like, let it go. It's not going to serve you. It's just going to add more weight to you. Just let it go. Let it flow, right? We're trying to get this flow state. Full expression, guys. We have to be articulate in our expressions, okay? It brings intimacy, connection, alignment, all those amazing things that people want to feel and do. And you cannot get it from, like, just superficial things like on Instagram and faking all that other stuff. No, no. Remember, we're behind the scenes. We're not focused on what we're presenting, right? We're only focused on the person who's behind the mirror. Authenticity, right? And the next one is be open and honest, right? We want to keep our integrity and just let whatever needs to happen, happen. 
but don't try to manipulate. And if you have to, just forgive yourself, okay? And just make a different decision the next time. Don't sit there and waste time self-sabotaging, feeling bad about yourself and all that. That's so much energy that's, like, not necessary. So you have to be your own best friend and tell that critic to shut the F up. We're team us all day and rock with yourself, okay? And so the next one is central expression, okay? You have to be all up in your body to feel it, right? And so I was questioning all my fellas out there, you guys, if you're a sensual guy, I want to know. If you're non-sensual, I want to know that too. And I want to know what my ladies think about that too because I would love to talk about more about that. Um, and then not trying to attach yourself to people. Sometimes you have to just be by yourself and work on why you can't be by yourself or work on why you need to be by yourself, okay? Because sometimes we may want to attach ourselves to somebody else, but we know that we don't need to be with nobody else right now. Now we need to be sitting down and doing some work and taking care of our business instead of trying to attach ourselves to someone. So what discipline are we lacking? And why do we need to sit down? What's that about? So those are the way that you can get into the ultimate body flow. I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation because I feel personally that it's necessary. I hope you do too. If you don't, I welcome in the comments. Drop some topics down there. Remember, this is all authenticity, interactiveness. So drop them in the comments below. What are we going to talk about, right? And then I am looking for people to also come on the show, like look at the topics and let's discuss some of the topics that you guys want to talk about. I'm interested in sitting down on this self-explorational journey with you. So this is Nia Rijo saying bye. It's been a pleasure having Black Exploration with you.